I know bros you've been waiting for this episode long time. So today I will show you how to install VEC in your school. Of course we've got different versions, different size, different power of VEC. It's like this Kraken mode which can handle even 16S battery pack and 200 or 300 amps at best. The best thing about those is the size. As you can see this one is smaller than my hand but it can still handle easily over 12,000 watt. The price over $300 but no surprise you are paying for the size, power and the features. If you've got higher budget then you can find even more powerful VCs on the market. But here I've got one of the cheapest VC which I found so far. This is newest Flipsky 75100. Flipsky is saying that this one can handle even 20S battery pack and 100 amps which is pretty amazing for the price. So I will install two of those in my e-scoot and again the best thing is the size because two of those are still smaller than one built-in controller and the price of those is almost the same like stock controllers. But I think that in real world, if those will handle around 60s and maybe 70 amps, then I will be pretty happy. So we will test those. Of course, you will need some extra stuff like the throttle. In my case, I will use this super cheap $10 stand throttle, which is working crazy smooth. All links in the description. I recommend to buy Bluetooth module. Thanks to it, you can connect smartphone to the controller so you can follow in real time telemetry data or you can easily change any settings in the controllers. Also, you can easily, thanks to it, switch profiles. Let's say that you make three profiles, full power, half power and police. In police, you set max speed 20 kilometers per hour and max power 200 watt. And you see the police, you are changing fast the profile, you turn off the smartphone, police will stop you, they are adding full throttle and this thing is going only 20 kilometers per hour and 200 watt. So yeah, this thing is make your life easier. And even if this thing on other profiles can go over 80 kilometers per hour and power over 8000 watt, then at that moment when they check you, this thing is going like grandma speed. Yeah. Thanks to it, you can save lots of cash. As an on-off switch, I will use XT90 connector with anti-spark. I'm using that kind of system on all my new projects, which I hike power demand, like in this case. And this one is, I think, also the safest, because if something bad is happening, you can just disconnect this connector and the power is not going from battery to the controllers. This system is well known from electric skateboards. I'm using this for ages. It's working perfect and the price may be like $7. Of course, you can use some soft switches like this one, which is from also Flipsky. It can handle 30S and even 200 amps. It's even water cooled, but it costs over $150. So this one is always the best choice. I love it. Also, you can collect some magic stuff to VC. Like here you can see monitor where you can also follow in real time telemetry of the VC. We've got also some extra settings buttons. This one got even built in GPS, so the speed is quite precise. There is also version without built in GPS and you can just make your own magic stuff because you can connect this one to Arduino. If you know some C++, you can make some magic happen. But this is a different story. For now, let's install VCs into this code. Under top cover, we will find cable jungle and the controllers. The thing is that we have to disconnect every single wire or the connector which is going to the controllers. Before you disconnect any connector, tag them so you will know how to connect it back. And of course, don't forget at first to disconnect battery from the controllers. So those yellow XT60 connectors. It took me some time to tuck every single connector, then I disconnect those. And now we have to remove three wires. First one, we have to remove this one, which is connecting controllers with this mini computer with the throttle. Second one is switch for echo turbo single dual drive. And last one is for key system with voltage meter, because we don't need those anymore. 
Bad news is that I can't remove this wire with those connectors through this tiny hole in the frame. But good news, I've got cutters, so let's do like this. And now I can remove the wire. Yes, I know, this is not good, some extra job have to be done, but this is the only way how you can remove wires from extra frame. old controllers are way bigger than these two. Actually these two are even smaller than one old controller. So thanks to it I'm able to save lots of space inside and also some weight. Pretty good. First ever loop key for e-scoots. Basically this is just on-off switch like this thing over here which got built in MOSFET so we can control it by this tiny button. But yeah it's that kind of thing can stop work at this the most important moment and of course in 7 5 100 flip sky we don't have on off switch so we have to install that kind of loop key or some other on off switch like this thing over here wiring let's start with motor wires we have got three big phase wires so green wire from the controller we are connecting to green wire on the motor blue wire to blue and yellow to yellow so it's quite easy over here you can see that i use mt60 connector which can easily handle 60 amps as a constant and around 100 amps in peak so i could do recommend for that kind of build because over here I will not exceed more than 100 amp per motor and not more than 45 amps from battery. So this one should be fine. And now it's time for hull wires. Here be a little bit more careful. On the manuals number two is hull connector which is going from the controller to the motor. Here it's a little bit more tricky so be careful. Black wire from the controller, we are connecting to black wire on the motor. Green wire from the controller, we are connecting to green wire on the motor. Orange wire, so how to, from the controller, we are connecting to blue wire on the motor. Yes, blue. Blue wire from the controller, so how long, we are connecting to yellow wire on the motor. Yes, yellow. Usually there is no temperature sensor in Chinese motors, so we are not connecting white wire. At the end, we've got red wire from the controller, which is 5 volts. We are connecting to red wire on the motor. Be careful with this wire, don't connect red wire, so 5 volts to any other wire. Otherwise, you can easily damage the hull sensors and it will be a little bit more expensive. So yeah, just be careful with these two wires. So you are connecting red to red, and black to black. Other wires are just signal ones, so no worries, but don't mix these two. Throttle and brake, we are connecting to port three, so to the COM connector. On the throttle, we'll find usually three wires, black, red, and yellow, blue, white, etc. This last wire is signal one. Red wire from the throttle, I connected to five volts, so to the red wire on COM port. Black GND wire from the throttle, I connected to GND black wire on the COM port. Yellow, white, etc. Throttle signal, I connected to ADC1, so to the purple wire on the COM connector. Usually in all Chinese e-scoots e-bikes, we've got one brake cable with two wires, which means that there is no hull sensor, there is just only on-off switch. So, we have to connect 3.3 volts, which is white wire, to one of those brake wires. And the second wire, we have to connect to ADC2, which is blue wire. Also, I decide to add some kind of resistor, because I'm not sure if there is any resistor in the brake lever. It doesn't matter on which wire, because this is one circuit. 
If you would like to connect two controllers together, you should use CAN port. So you have to connect black wire from the one controller to black wire on the other controller. And the same for the white wire. That's it, you connect the two controllers together and both will be visible in the application. If you would like to connect controllers to your smartphone, you need that kind of simple Bluetooth adapter, which you are connecting to UART2 connector on the controller. So this one. And the thing is that someone messed up the wiring in the 75100 controller because as you can see I had to connect black wire from the controller to red wire on this Bluetooth module. Red to white, orange to green and green to orange. So someone really messed up the wiring. So if you would like to use that kind of model you have to check if red wire is positive and if black is negative because in my case the black wire is positive so not very good switch there Here is my loop key, so I connected controllers to the battery and let's pour it up. As you heard, there was no spark, so everything seems to be working just fine. And we've got blue light on both controllers, which means that they are working. I recommend Genuine application for VC, which is VC tool. So let's connect to the controllers and we are in. So, so far everything seems to be working just fine. Do we have two controllers visible? Let's scan. Yep, two controllers are visible. So now let's set up the motors. Let's click on setup motors. Would you like to... No, I don't want. Let's select generic motor. Let's choose large old runner. Let's click next. Warning, yes, of course. So in X30, I've got 16S battery. Capacity actually doesn't matter, but let's place 36 amps hour. Of course, on the top, we've got type of battery. I've got Lions. So let's click next. Okay. Direct drive. And I have no idea what to write over here about real diameter, of course, I choose a direct drive. You will see the info about correct values of the Y wheel diameter in the description in a future. But so far, let's just leave it like this and let's click run detection. Now, be careful. Be sure that the wires are not on the way of the motors because motors will spin. So let's click on detect all motors over CAN, okay? And it's processing. So now the motor should make the sounds and rotate. And now the VC is finding the best settings for the motors. Still processing. Okay, so as you can see, we can push for the rear motor 94 amps and for the front 89 amps. Of course, I will change those values to 100 amps per motor. And I'm pretty sure those motors will handle it quite easily. So let's hit OK. And now we can check if we got good rotation on the wheels. So let's check. First, OK, it's connected right way. And the front one over the can also. If, you, if your wheel is moving backward, just click on the invert and check it again. As you can see now, my front motor is rotating backward. So I have to click on the invert and now let's check it again. Yeah, now it's goody good. And let's click 
on the finish. Now we have click on setup input. Thanks to it, we'll be able to adjust settings for the throttle and the brake. I connected throttle and the brake for first VC, so I will stick to this one. Let's click next. Now it's communicating and we have to choose ADC. So this one over here. Let's click on next. And now you can see some funny things, but at the bottom we can see voltage reading. It means that ADC is just analog system, so it's working from 0.8 volts to maximally 3.3 volts. So when I squeeze throttle, you can see that the values are rising and do it like a couple times. Push it fully and release it because it's mapping the throttle position. The same for the brake lever, but in this case, we've got only on off switch, so it doesn't matter if I squeeze delicately or more, it's just showing or on off. And that's it. The VC just map position of the throttle and the brake lever. Hit on up and right. Choose next. It's communicating. And now we have to choose from top menu current, no reverse, brake ADC2. We can left other values, right configuration, and finish. But actually, Sometimes it can be not it, because now when I hit the brake lever, as you can see, the brake is just holding for like two seconds, which is obviously an issue. So we have go into multi setting tab and we have to find this proper option, which is hidden somewhere far. One week later, I found it. You have to go to app config. Then you have to choose ADC from the top. And from the second menu, you have to choose mapping. Now go at the bottom and you can see ADC2. Here you have to write something like maybe three volts. So yeah, no, 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 three volts. So this is our stop position and let's hit OK. Right settings. So in the left bottom corner and now when I squeeze the brake lever as you can see it's instant let's choose RT data so now you can see some funny numbers and on full throttle it's speeding up quite rapidly a little bit of the brake but yeah the wheels are like stopping instantly which is kind of bad but we can easily fix it. We have to change other values. Yeah, VC is so complex, bros. Let's click on multi settings. Here we'll have settings for the battery and the motors. Let's choose limits. And let's start with motor current marks. I'm pretty sure that those stock X30 motors or loud TI30 will handle 100 amps, like easily. So let's choose this one. Also, I will check it if they really can handle it and motor current marked brake. I don't like motor braking system, actually those electrical electronic braking system. So I will choose like zero because I think the scoot is more stable. So I can choose zero. Battery current marks. I've got a brand new battery for TI-30 scoot. And I'm pretty sure that in real world, this battery cannot provide more than 100 amps. So 50 amps per controller but I would like to extend lifespan of the battery so I will go with like 40 amps per controller which is still around 5000 watt for both controllers because it will be 80 amps for both controllers okay battery current max regain of course you can choose some regain so if you will break then the power from the motors will go into the battery but at the same time, you will heat up the motors, wires and the controllers. So again, over here, I will choose like zero because I don't need it. I want to use it on the full power. So I don't want to extra overheat the motors or the controllers. I know that TI-30 battery got cut off at 53 volts. So end cut off, I will set to 53 volts, but cut off start, I will choose at like 50 maybe 5 volts it means that at 55 volts the scoot will be super 
not powerful, like Xiaomi M365. So you will know that you are almost out of juice. But at 53 volts, the controller will just disable power for the motors. So it's quite nice. Here we can choose the maximum temperature for the MOSFET, so for the controllers. And maximum wattage. Let's say that I don't want to go over like those cannot handle more than 3000 watts, I am pretty sure. But for the first time I will set like maybe 2500 watt per controller for testing purpose. And there we got maximum braking wattage. Here I will choose like maybe 100, just why not. And that's it, right, limits to all VCs. Because we use CAN, so we are writing the same settings for both VCs. Write it. And we are actually ready to go, almost, because I have to place all those wires and mold the controllers inside. On the top we've got RT data, this is like telemetry. On the first screen we've got lots of fancy clocks. When I hit the throttle, break yes 182 km per hour is wrong value i will have to change the wheel diameter from 283 millimeters to maybe 200 and in the and we've got also some other menus like this one where also we've got some extra data also at the bottom.